Okay guys, let's get into the meat and potatoes of why buy Hawaii. Uh, let's talk about statistics and figures. Um, I have <laughs> a whole list in front of me that when we um, kind of go into post on this video, Kemlin, because she's a saint, um, can sort of put all this on the screen for you guys because I don't expect you to read all of this on my teeny tiny paper. So um, this is just for my reference so I can be sure that I am quoting data accurately because I do not want to, um, I, I want these videos to be very, very factual, very cut and dry, very much based on statistical information, not my opinions or my feelings or anything like that. Because at this point, um, the fear and the concerns that we have been addressing and hearing from people, um, this, this is what's going to solve that. And so I can jump up and down and tell you all day that I've had a great personal experience buying not one but two homes here. Um, but I think to just give you guys the actual numbers will hopefully go a really long way towards, you know, curbing some of the concerns that people have about the Hawaii real estate market. Um, we are not the mainland. A lot of the mainland rules or um, things that affect real estate on the mainland simply don't affect us in the same way. And most of the time that's for the best because um, we don't. We don't see huge market decreases. We're going to be talking about in these videos the last decade, the last 10 years of data on the real estate market here in Hawaii. So in the last 10 years, fun fact, we have not seen two back-to-back -back years where the market has lost value, which is crazy for a 10-year period of time. Um, and I think that's an important thing to acknowledge, but it's also important to acknowledge that there have been years where the market has gone down. Um, last year, 2020, was the biggest single year decrease that we saw for townhouses. Um, however, single family homes gained 5.2% in value. Townhomes lost 3.2. This is not something that is cringeworthy though. I know when you talk about losses, people start jumping up and down saying like, see, I, I told you the market's gonna crash. It's gonna lose value. You guys, a 3.2% loss is the biggest loss we have seen in a decade. The two previous years for townhomes decreases that we saw was 0.4% and 0.6%. And they were not back-to-back -back years. If I look at this correctly, it was 2011 and then 2015 we saw 0.4 and 0.6% decrease. And then in 2020, blame the pandemic, blame whatever you want, but we saw a 3.2% decrease. That being said, fast forward to 2021, as I'm sitting here, it's the first week of July, 2021, from May of 2020 to May of 2021, townhomes saw a 14% increase. So if you want to look at your normal military assignment here is three years. Um, let's just pretend. Let's pretend we owned a home from 2018 to 2020, to 2020. So we bought our house in 2018. That year we saw a 6.1% appreciation. The next year, 2019, we saw a 4.3% appreciation. And then, oh no, 2020, we saw a 3.2% loss. I'm going to sell my house now. You're still looking at a 7.2% overall appreciation for the time that you were stationed here in Hawaii, which means roughly, like let's pretend you bought a home for $500,000. Your $500,000 home that you used tax-free government dollars to pay down for three years gained 7.2%, which means $36,000. Your home went up in value $36,000, even with the largest single year decrease that we've seen in the last decade. So you bought it at 500, you've been paying your mortgage down, 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 down over the last three years, your asset has continued to gain value and you now have 
$36,000 of just appreciation, let alone the fact that you don't owe $500,000 on it anymore. So you're gonna probably list this house at 535, 540, somewhere around there, and you're going to subtract what you currently owe on it, and then you're going to be able to see what your profit is after your closing costs and realtor fees. Um, and maybe we'll do that in another video. Maybe I'll have Clayton help me and we can actually crunch the numbers in our PCS with less stress packet. We actually have that as an example and I think it could maybe be helpful for you guys to see that sort of stuff now. But let's pretend you bought a home in 2019, a townhouse and then you saw a 4.3% appreciation and a 3.2% decrease, and then, oh my God, a 14% increase. Um, the reason that this is relevant to point out is because even in years where we see decreases, call them large, call them small, call them whatever, decreases. In the last 10 years, there have been a total of three years the market has lost value, 0.4%, 0.6%, 3.2%. The years preceding and the years following, there were substantial increases. If you want to um, look at it for the whole time, and you guys can see for yourself, um, how the market has appreciated, how it keeps gaining value.